So I'm going to be talking about using uh, FLDigi, that's the software, with PSK31, that's the mode, um, like FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, those are kind of, you know, phone would be the mode, phone would be the mode for those. PSK31 is a mode for digital, right? You have other ones, FT8, uh, JT65, JT9, uh, MFSK, Olivia, any of those. Um, and so, and I've, and I've used pretty much more or less of all of those, but uh, all of those I'm going to focus on, PS, out of all of those I'm going to focus on PSK31. So, uh, just really fast, everybody get out your cameras, write these links down. These links, I have literally taken all of the notes for you. Everything that's going to be in my slides, this is the, the link to the actual slides themselves right here. And then this is also a link to notes. So that's going to have uh, URLs to download the software. It's going to have uh, the information for frequencies. It's going to talk about the um, various um, uh, macros, different things like that. So this is where you're going to want. And then I'll also have this up at the very end. So Okay, perfect. Yeah, so this is... This is so that that way you guys can focus on listening to the present presentation and trying to figure out what I'm actually doing on the screen, rather than trying to just scramble and take notes as fast as possible and you go, oh shoot, what did he say? Right? It's like I'm sitting there in math at the University of Utah, and I'm sitting there going, okay, sweet, I'm following. He's going through the quadratic formula and why it actually works, and it's you know I see a little bit of black magic going on, and I look down and I'm turning right down, and the next thing I know, like 17 whiteboard boards are full, and I'm going. You've got to be kidding me, where did I just miss, right? So anyways, I don't want that to happen to you guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead again. I'm an amateur. I'm not, a, I'm not a professional, but I did sleep in a holiday inn last night, and Ted's heard me say that joke about 18,000 times. Um, FL Digi can do a lot of things. It can actually, uh, it's a very, very complicated program. I'm not going to touch on every single little thing it can do. I'm going to try to give you guys the keys and the tools within FL Digi to make your field day successful. Um, so that's basically going to be uh, more or less what this is really going about. Field day. Who here has ever participated in field day by the raise of hand? And who has not, just by the raise of hand? Okay, so all of you guys not raising your hand, uh, try to find on ARL, they've got a map. It's actually a ton of fun. It's pure chaos, brains, cats, and dogs. It's all sorts of fun stuff. So it goes for 24 hours straight, right? And those 24 hours straight, you're going to want to make as many contacts. There is a winter field day. It is not an ARRL contest, uh, but we, we participated with that one as well. It has very similar rules, and we used PSK31 for that, and it worked really well. Um, especially when the bands were dead, the digital mode really, really helped out. Okay, and then also the fourth, the fourth full weekend in June is when it is. And I know a lot of people get... Uh, kind of upset about this one, the whole I don't want to do a contest on Sunday thing. It's not really our choice, and a lot of people don't like to miss church or whatnot, but uh, this is, there's a, a special place in heaven for those that actually go to fill it. So, uh, it's, it's an important thing. So, it goes from noon to noon our time, kind of. I'm not going to get into that. There's actually some changes in the rules, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, it can be freezing. Uh, field day we had last year up at Strawberry Reservoir with the club I was with and it hit uh, 31 degrees Fahrenheit at night and then it was like, I think, 91 during the day. So it's a lot of fun. Go straight 24 hours. Okay, so let's actually get into the meat of the discussion. Now that you guys know what field day is because it sounded like none of you have ever heard of it before. PSK31 is a digital mode. Uh, there's lots of them and it gives you extra points. Uh, it counts just like CW. It gives you two points per contact. Uh, and there's multiple multipliers. So, uh, if you work one station, say you work, who knows, Carl WE7OMG. Let's say he's working field day, right? Uh, I work him on 10 meters, I work him on 20 meters, and I work him on 40 meters. Well, all using PSK31, I've got two points for each one of those, now I've got six points, right? So, you've got all sorts of different multipliers with it. It gives you a lot of points, um, especially where... Who has ever been working field day and you're just running into the same station over after over and over and over again? This gives you one more opportunity to go beyond just the phone and the CW to have another opportunity to work that station yet again on all of those bands, right? It's also really great with uh, RF noise. So PSK31, uh, it's really, really narrow. Phone, you're taking up uh, 3,000 
hertz, right? Three kilohertz worth of worth of space. Well, each signal is only 60 hertz wide. So if you, and the first 300 hertz are kind of really unusable, right? And if you put a ceiling at 3,000 hertz, you've got 27 hertz worth of space, of working space, so you can squeeze 45 signals in that tiny little area, theoretically. Um, sometimes people don't line them up perfectly straight, so there's a little bit of space. But you could technically fit 45 signals. Which allows you, you're not cha changing and jumping around frequencies. You know where everyone's going to be at there. Everybody's at the same location, and you can just jump around and see. And it's, it's like you watch the waterfall light up right at noon, and you go, oh my gosh, what in the world did I get into, right? Uh, it's 31 baud. It can do about 50 words per minute. Uh, it helps fight QSB. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't really, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to generalize here, it doesn't have error correction. Um, but it is quick. So sometimes you're going along, it's wonderful, and all of a sudden, right? And then it comes back and you can start reading it again. Uh, but it's, it allows you to very quickly ask for that section or ask for that, um, uh, you know, their, uh, their class again. The other thing, and this is huge, uh, is very heavily used. Uh, when I first did uh, field day, um, it was at home. And I was always told, use Ready, use Ready, use Ready. Ready is awesome. It's amazing. And I found like two people, and it was, and I was searching up and down the band, looking. I couldn't find anybody. And then I stumbled across 14.070, and it was like, right. I'm turning, fudging around to try to turn down the volume. It's blowing me out of the water. Um, so we've got some other modes, right? You've got the phone, upper side, lower side. Uh, you've got Morse code. And then you've got the digital PSK31 and ready, right? So one of the things that I've heard on the repeater is, okay, well, PSK31 is fine and all, but why don't you want to use something like FT8? FT8 is incredibly <coughs> resilient. JT65 and JT9 are incredibly resilient with QSB, QRM, QRN, um, but it's not very resistant to XYL QRM. So just forewarning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it's, it's fantastic. They're really narrow. I mean, you could squeeze a gazillion of them in there with JT9, right? It, it's it's fast, in the fact that you have um, the the data goes through, and you know exactly what they said, and you can move on to the next station when you complete it. You're not asking again and again and again what they said. But uh, but it's also really slow. In JT65, you're looking at a minimum of five minutes for a full exchange, and when you're in a contest, it's kind of not really what you want. Uh, ECC up the wazoo, but it's not really for contesting. People are going, well, FT8, that's a lot faster. That's a 15 second uh, time cycle, right? So you can get a full QSO in under a minute, and, or two minutes, and, uh, two and a half minutes. But you're limited to a 13 character count limit with each transmission. So with JT65, you can only send 13 characters in that full minute. Well, same thing with FT8, same thing with that. The problem with it is a lot of the programs that you're using, whether it's WSJTX, JTDX, or uh, any of the other variants, you're forced into what this exchange is right here. So these are the 13 characters that you can send. These are the 13 characters that you're receiving, and that is it. There's no place for a section or um, your class or anything like that. There's, there, there's not really a true mechanism. There are a couple of pieces of software that you could use. Uh, I don't want to mention them because I don't want you guys to do this. But uh, that will allow you to do freeform. But again, you're still stuck with 13 characters. And it's going to make it really, really difficult. So uh, that's one of the reasons why you're not going to want to use FT8, JT65, or JT9. Uh, there's a bunch of logistical reasons for I, right? Uh, again, like I said, ready. It's great for field day, but there's very few users. Um, However, say you're working PSK31 and you stumble across the one guy that happens to have a really, really old machine that's legit with right filters, right? And he's out there with FL Digi, it makes it really easy to just click over, work the guy, jump right back to PSK31. You've logged him as a digital contact. You can't log them as PSK31 and then log them again as a ready. It's a, it's a digital contact, right? So, uh, first thing what you're going to do in those notes, you're going to download FL Digi. 
Uh, it comes on a, a site called SourceForge. Uh, the links, again, are in the notes. Uh, if you're running Ubuntu um, or Linux, I, this guy's running Linux right here. Super easy to have to get install. If you don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. Um, Mac, I don't know why you'd want to do that to yourself. So, <laughs> yeah, some, some of you know, but yeah, and I know a lot, some of you like pain. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I actually have used Mac at work for years before, so it's, uh, it's just another variant. Um, with that, FL Digi has logging capabilities built in. They have field day software, they have field day clients, they have all this stuff. But I'm gonna focus on using N3FJP. Uh, and there's, we're gonna get into that in a little bit uh, further on as well. Unfortunately, it only runs on Windows. Uh, if, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of Wine on Linux before. It's a Windows emulator on Linux. Uh, don't try it, it turns out horrible. Uh, it's, a, it's a disaster. It is also a paid product, it is not free. Now granted it's a cheap product, I think it was like 50 bucks or something like that, and you get all of them. That Yeah, I, I can't remember, but I, I don't, I, I want to say I paid for mine. Um, but it's, it's really, really well worth it. It's really, um, it's really slick software. That's probably the biggest downside is that it's not free, but it works really well. Um, and we'll kind of get into that. It's uh, better than the built-in. It's got linking capabilities to other stations. You can have multiple stations running, all with uh, entry FJP, and it can link in. It does dupe checking. So say you have two PSK31 stations, and they're on 20, and they're on 40, and then halfway through, they switch, right? And they work the same station, and say, oh, we've already worked you, you know, off with you, go away, shoot. So. Um, it's very intuitive in comparison. Um, now there are, these, these are also open source projects that do interface with FL Digi, it's called FD Client and FD Server. They're, uh, uh, they're basically tiny little scripts. They run on Linux, they run on Windows, uh, but they are brutal, um, but they do work. So I set it up once and I think that'll probably be my last. The hardware considerations. This is going to be another thing that I'm going to want you to think about. Uh, this is a little bit different. This station is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to with CW or with uh, doing some sort of phone uh, station. Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend having a second monitor if possible. Now you're going to have to start thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to need more power. I'm going to need more outlets. Am I running off a of battery? Am I running off a of generator? What's my, you know, you're going to have a little bit more of a, a station setup. Um, it's going to be a little bit more involved, but you're going to want to kind of think about these things ahead of time when you're getting ready for this PSK station. Uh, you're going to, um, what, you, what we do is we'll have the logging entry FJP up on one screen so we can see it pop up and tell us dupes. Or sometimes it's nice to just be able to say, oh, cool, well, we're on 40 meters, right? Or like, oh, cool, yeah, we're working on 20 meters. Thanks for the second contact, right? And, and it, it, it'll tell you that, and it's really nice to know. Or, oh, yeah, we just worked you on the phone over in one of the other stations, and it looks like, uh, it looks like Ted was the one that uh, worked them, right? And I'm sorry you had to talk to Ted. So, right, so there, there's, there's all sorts of reasons why you'd want this second monitor. And then we have FL Digi on the other one. I also highly recommend using the mouse and keyboard. Uh, it's a pain to work with a trackpad, um, especially when you're trying to type in a lot of this stuff. Uh, laptops work great, especially because they have back and built, uh, back, back up built-in batteries, right? You're going along, generator runs out of gas. Again, Ted forgot to fill a generator, and you're going, oh, what am I gonna do? So, so Ted's out there, you know, it's, a winter field day and it's 10 degrees outside and he's out there filling a the generator. But luckily you still have all your logging stuff back. <coughs> uh, you guys are going to want to be familiar with cat control. Uh, FL Digi does work with cat control. There's actually two mechanisms within FL Digi that allow you to interface with the radio, to be able to change frequencies. And it's wonderful having cat control. I'm not going to go over it. I feel like that could be a whole lesson in and of itself. Um, as well as the audio. You need to make sure that you understand your radios audio outputs, how things are going to work. Some of them have it built in, and I can just plug the computer right into the back of the radio and I'm done, right? Versus uh, 
like I have to use a Signalink USB with my FT-857, or you've got a rig blaster, or a tin can of string, um, whatever, whatever is going to work for you, right? So uh, you're going to want to be uh, conscientious, conscientious of that. You're going to want to be familiar with the cat control as well as your audio uh, before you set up. The FD, uh, the, going back to the FL Digi built-in logging software, it does save all of the data in the ADIF format. So you could export it and then import it into another logging program. Um, it, it does have a built-in internal log and there's also another plugin called FL Log that can help assist do other things as well. I'm not going to get into that. But it is, but it is available. Um, you can also export in the Cabrillo format as well, so that helps you actually submit the logs, right? Uh, it's difficult and ugly, that's my personal opinion, no offense to anyone who loves it, but I just find it substantially less intuitive. Um, but you, it, uh, you can, with the client in the field day software, they have the client that allows you, if you had a phone station, to combine all of the logs and stuff. So this guy's working phone, this guy's working PSK31. If you're using the field day server, it'll actually combine that. But uh, I just want to make you guys aware, it does have the capability to do this. Uh, but I choose to use the N3FJP logging. It also saves in the ADIF format. It runs locally as a server. Uh, so the ADIF log, remember how I've got it up on one screen and I've got FL Digi on the other screen. Um, it's running locally on the computer on 127.0.0.1, uh, .0 .0 right, the local host, and it just opens up a port 1100, and in FL Digi you just say click, and wow, it connects to it, and, and you're done. That's, and that's what you're doing. Question? Uh, go ahead. So, so FL Digi is a client? Uh, uh, yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. So uh, FL Digi would be a client and is actually pushing data to the N3 FJP logging software, which is then, to make it even more fun, is then networked and logged because it can be a client to another server and everything's syncing that way. So you got to sync about what you're going to do with your log. Logging. That's horrible. Ted's rolling his eyes at me again. All right. So again, it also exports in Cabrillo format. It does a couple of other things too. It'll say like, it'll say like, what was your section? What was your class? And it calculates automatically. It says, okay, this, these were your digital contacts, these were your phone, these were your CW, uh, this is your multipliers. Were you running on battery backup, or did you have solar power? Did you have? Uh, did you uh, contact Mel Park and get the message uh, from your section manager? Did you work at a satellite station? It does all of that for you. Spits out the logs, and you literally just send it and you submit it. It gives it. It calculates the points for you. It does the bonuses. It, it does all of that. So it's really, really easy to use. It even has a map, so you can actually load it up and see where you've worked and where you haven't worked. And so it does, it does combine them. It allows people to be working on phone or CW and to actually see those imported. Like I said before, you can say, oh, you, I've worked someone else before. Uh, there are two methods with N3FJP for syncing all of the various N3FJP clients together. Right? How, how do you do this? They have a TCP option. Uh, I got it to work once, and the other time it actually crashed us on us on field day, and I had to back up to this one. And later on, they said, "Oh, this is actually the the preferred route." Uh, SMB Samba. Uh, what you're going to do? What you, we did is we would just set up a laptop, a Windows laptop, share a folder. You put the file in there, tell everybody where it's at, and they all connect to that file over Samba. Um, and it works slicker than snot. So. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about my 3 fjp you're working from home. You're not with a club, right? Um, Alif's decided, he's like, oh, I hate those guys with the, the Utah Valley Amateur Radio Club, especially that Jeff guy. He just rambles on, right? He's like, I'm going to work from home. I mean, I'm going to be a 1-H, one, uh, one right, in UT. Uh, but he's made some really freaking cool contacts, and he also wants to hopefully maybe they submit into Logbook of the World or uh, QRZ or whatnot. It'll push to that for you. It doesn't push to QRZ, but it will push to the Logbook of the World, and then I just import from QRZ, or import from Logbook of the World straight to QRZ. So, um, and, it, and it will also handle other contacts. So as I'm working other guys, like say I'm working from home, I'm doing field day from home, if I've worked before on WSJTX, it's in my N3FJP logging software. If I've worked them on phone, it's in there. If I've worked them on meteor scatter six meters, it's in there. So that's kind of one of the things that's really, really nice about that is if you're doing it for personal, not necessarily, not necessarily club, um, 
it gives you the opportunity to see that you've actually worked them before, and it's kind of fun to see that. Okay, so terms. Who here recognizes any of the terms up here? Raise your hand. See? I'm actually, what you guys don't know is your doctors told me to help you get exercise, so I mean, you guys stretch out a little bit. Okay, so who here is fluent with Morse code? Or not even fluent, but has attempted and has gone through the pains of Morse code? Okay, there we go. See, now we've got some more hands. So um, these are relatively common abbreviations that you would use in Morse code, isn't it? Are they not? So, so CQ, these are going to be terms that we use regularly with digital, whether it's PSK31, PSK63, MFSK, Olivia, um, any of those. We use these quite a bit. And so, so CQ, we all know what that means, right? Calling any station. FD, we'll add, pack that in for field day, because I don't want us to type out field day and let it go on forever. So I'm going to go CQ, CQ, field day, or CQ, field day, CQ, field day. Back to you, again, like again, I, that totally came through scrambled. I have no idea what happened. Um, Ted got a generator too close, maybe, I don't know. And uh, totally scrambled everything in terms of RFI. PSE, like please, right? QSL, confirm or acknowledge receipt, right? One of the two, question or answer, it can work as both ways. QRM, QRN, and QSB, right? You've got um, man-made noise, that's how I remember it, nature-made noise, and, and uh, a bumpy road, right? Your signal's got a bumpy road, QSB. Or you're just gonna jump, I'm gonna go from 20 meters to 40 meters, and you want people to follow you over. Uh, these are used, these two are used heavily. K and KN. Um, <coughs> From the usage, K basically means, you know, uh, this is N1SC, CQ, CQ, field day, N1SC, PSE, K, right? So that's what I'd say when I'm calling CQ. That means K is kind of like over, um, I'm done with my transmission, anybody come back to me. And versus the KN is kind of the same thing, it's like, okay, I'm done with my transmission, but I'm talking to Doug, where's Doug? He's right there. I'm talking to Doug. But, and I don't want anyone to come back at me. I don't want anyone to come back to me. So I'm going to put can on the end. And that way, when you see someone else saying that, you're going, oh, they're having a conversation with someone else. I'm going to wait for them to finish, right? Um, SK, I'm jumping out of here. I'm uh, going to go jump in the lake. Uh, it's too hot. Uh, QRZ, right, I'm ready for the next station. So again, you, they use a lot of the same terms, uh, a lot of the same uh, abbreviations. Okay, this is just kind of a quick tip I want to throw out there. Um, a lot of people like to use all uppercase letters. FL Digi, or PSK31, sorry, excuse me, not FL Digi. PSK31 was not necessarily designed to use all uppercase letters. Probably 90% of everybody that I see runs uppercase letters. The, the thought behind the algorithm or the, 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 the protocol that they were thinking when they were doing this is, Okay, if I have a sentence and I'm sending this sentence like, I love you know, walk, long, walk, long walks on the beach or whatever, you're going to capitalize the first letter of that sentence, right? So that's going to be a character that's going to be less frequently used. And the rest of the sentence is all going to be lowercase. Then what they did is they said, okay, I want to find the most common letters and I'm going to make those the fewest amount of bits. I'm going to make that so that it sends those really, really fast. So A and S and R. Uh, I'm going to make those so they send really, really fast. And then they said, oh, we've got to deal with uppercase. That's right, right? And so then what they did is they tacked those on. Uh, so sending the exact same message, uh, Jeff, Julie, Echo, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Space, November 1, Sierra, Charlie, you can see the difference between uppercase and lowercase is actually uh, quite substantial when you're doing time. And I've got a little demo for that a little bit later. So, OK, this is nice and all. But have you seen the band plan and how freaking huge and how much space you have, where in the world do I find everybody? There's kind of a convention set up where you kind of go to a certain spot, and this is and this is where you're going to uh, where you're going to go find them. This is also again in the notes. Uh, but if you've noticed, there's kind of a pattern here, right? I don't know if you guys noticed that. For some weird reason, they're all in yellow too. Um, this right here, this is this is kind of another one that you can go check. Typically, I don't ever find anyone here. And on the 80 meters, they're just, they're weirdos. So they have to do this, right? It's kind of this weird thing. But the, in, in the notes, I've actually included a lot more than just this. I've actually included, 
included several of the other bands as well. Um, okay, so this is going to be the one thing that I'm really going to want to go over is the workflow. And this is the why I have the demo set up in the two laptops. Um, and I'm going to actually switch over to FL Digi here. So, but the workflow is going to be just like any other exchange. You're going to give them, the, the point is you want them to have your call sign, your class, or your, and, and your section. The exchange is what we refer to that as. And you want to get the same thing. You want to log the QSO and you want to go on, right? And you want to get out of there. There's two ways of doing that. One is the hunt and peck mode, that's what I call it. Um, I might have stole this term from someone, probably, I don't know. Um, and then the other one is actually running a frequency. Running a frequency, I'm going to sit right here on this spot and this waterfall, and I'm just going to call CQ, and people are going to come to me, right? I'm running this frequency. And so you've got two methods here, and you're going to have two different ways of working these different stations, right? Uh, versus the hunt and peck is, I don't want to run a frequency. I'm going to check out, who's this guy? Okay, I'm going to go over here, who's this guy? Oh, I've worked here before. Okay, what about this guy? So now you're kind of hunting and pecking around, which has a very different kind of workflow and a different pattern. You're going to be contacting them with different information, right? So let's, uh, so let's go ahead and see this. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull up. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It's the same information, regardless how you found it. Yeah, and it is the same information. You're exchanging the same stuff, and I'll actually go over that because it's actually uh, it is a little bit different. So, first of all, let's let's go ahead and go all the way back to, and actually, we're going to address that, and I'll and I'll show you. And in fact, it's actually even color coded uh, in there for you to to show you um, because it is a little bit different the way that they're they're handling that. Uh, so let's go ahead and say you've installed FLDG and you've installed Entry FJP login software. Okay, this is fantastic. When you first install it, it's going to pull up. Um, da -da -da, let's see the setup. So you're going to you're going to fill this out, right? You're going to fill out your information. Um, this is going to help with writing that Cabrillo format file at the very end for submitting the logs, right? Different things like that. Uh, it tells you, so say you're using a club call up here, right, K7 uh, UVA or, or whatever club it might be, but I'm still an operator, right, I'm the person in charge or whatever, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that up here, right. Uh, also when you're in here, if you're changing operators, you've got someone there, there uh, someone needs a break, you can change it really quickly. Uh, so it allows you to be able to see this very well. Again, right here, this is a little bit different because I'm in the digital portion, but it actually will let you read, it will tell you what you need to say to the other person. This is K7 UVA, please copy three Alpha Uniform Tango, right? So you literally read that from left to right right here. At the same time, when they're giving you that information, you literally punch it in right here. It's going to show the contacts up here. Uh, where you're at, if it's a duplicate, or if you've worked them on maybe a different frequency, it'll tell them, it'll say, hey, you're good to log them, or hey, that was the first time that you've worked someone out of Los Angeles, or, or whatnot. So it gives you kind of a little bit of message, message feedback in the blue window. So that's what this is. So you get that, you finish getting this set up and installed. How am I doing on time? Okay. Uh, so you finish getting this set up and, on, on, set up and installed. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and you're going to say, Remember, remember how I was talking about how it goes over port 1,100, or, yeah, 1,100? Um, you've got to turn that on. So we're going to go ahead and turn this guy on. And I want to enable the server on this port, right? Done. So that's all it is. Check this, and then done, and now you're good to go. So this guy is ready. Now there are some, I have included in the notes, links to help configure and connect this guy to the other guys, to all the other stations. Uh, I'm not going to cover that now. I want to cover just specifically the interaction with FL Digi. Uh, but they have videos and different things like that that help you link all of the stations together. Uh, so you're going to want to go into the notes and actually read those or, and, and check that out and be familiar with them. So we've gone and we have installed FL Digi at this point in time. It's the prettiest thing you guys have probably ever seen, huh? Like, that's just really good. The first time I actually loaded it, I, actually, I think I started to cry. Because um, you're going, what? <laughs> what in the world is this? I have no idea, all these weird things. 
and you've got these tick marks. Okay, that's nice. What in the world is this slider? So again, I'm not going to try to cover everything, but I'm going to give you just kind of some really quick basics here. And I want to make sure that I'm actually covering everything that I want to go over. Okay, so when you first set up, just like the N3FJP software, it's going to have you set up uh, your information. You're going to punch in your call sign. Notice I put lowercase letters, right? Because I want to be a little bit faster. I'm in Lehigh, Utah, so this is like if I was just doing general rag chewing or whatever. I'm in DN40BK. And by the way, that does not work for very well for CW. If you guys are well, uh, aware of a break in CW, uh, people think I'm breaking after giving my location. Uh, and they're like, what in the world's going on? Um, I, I can say the same thing. I can put my club call here and then the operator call here, right? My name, antenna, I've, I've filled this out huge before sometimes. I've got a multi-parallel homebrew dipole made out of copper weld wire that's, you know, you can, you can, you can go to your heart, you know, you can go crazy with that. So anyway, so what you're gonna go ahead is you fill that in when it first pops up. Um, and then, and I'm actually not gonna show you this, uh, I'm going to show you the easier route. You're, you've got to configure. You've got to connect it to the M3FJP uh, server or service, right? So I'm going to go over here. I want to configure the logging, and I want to configure the M3FJP. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, at, look at this. Look at these tabs. Like, this is a nightmare to try to navigate, right? Try to find something in here. That's why it's so much easier to just go straight this way. Uh, again, it already has local hosts set up. Once uh, For those of you that aren't networking or computer gurus, 127.0.0, Dot one is kind of like your home. That's your that's your warm, soft, fuzzy place with a blanket and a fire, right? Uh, and it already has the port. It already knows. Hey, look, 1100 is the default port. That's where I'm going to go. You click the connect button, and you see a bunch of gobbledygook come right here, and that says, Hey, I'm talking to N3FJP. It's working, and I'm connected. So he's he's turned green at this point in time. You save and close. So now we've gotten to the point where we're going, okay, sweet, we're, we're, we're ready. So I'm going to go ahead, let's just go over the menu, really, or the layout here. Um, hopefully you guys can see my, my mouse okay. That's a lot smaller than what I was anticipating. So up here, this is the frequency, very top left corner, 14.070. Everything is done in upper sideband, even when you go down into 40 meters or 80 meters, when you're doing digital, just do upper sideband, um, or else you're not going to find people because you're on the other half of the the, walk, the the point of origin, if you will, right? So I can use my cursor. I've got cat control set up, right? And I want to go check out, see if uh, there's any weirdos down here. Oh, no, there's no one. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up. You can use your mouse to do that. You don't have a mouse with a scroll wheel, and like this gets really fudged, and you're going, ah! I'm, What's one world's going on? I can click on the left side and go 14070, enter, and I'm right back. Down here is the waterfall, and as you notice, I'm going to go ahead and click on 1500 hertz, right? Right down here it says 1500 hertz at the very bottom. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Somewhere around here, I'm looking at this like straight from the side, so I don't know if I'm pointing at the right one. Um, but you can see that it has calculated that if you were to do a single tone right here, it's going to be more or less exactly right at what would be equivalent to uh, 14 14.0715 megahertz. So it's just that these fields are in kilohertz, right? But, but that was, that's where it would be is 14.0715 uh, um, kilohertz. So we've got the frequency where it, it is on the waterfall. Uh, this is the time on and the time off. Uh, I'm not, uh, let's not worry about these. You've got the, the call sign, the operator. So like if they give you, a, this is Mike, right? Or whatever you can click on, you can fill it out here. Their class and their section. It does not look like this by default. You've got to go into the contest again, and you have got to check the fill day button right there. Again, it's really hidden, right? Super. Uh, they've got 18 gazillion features in here. This is why I didn't want to try to cover everything, right? There's, you could go on and on. So I've gone ahead and filled out my information. One hotel, from Uniform Tango, I'm uni uh, November 1, Sierra Charlie, right? 
So that is where this changes. Normally it has like a, a location, a city, a state. So if you're just doing a general rag you, you can save their location and stuff like that into here. But that's how you can get the class and section. Um, let's see, and then also up here, this is gonna be the other thing I wanna focus on. The yellow window up at the top, this is basically what you have sent, have already sent, or you are receiving directly where you are. I mean, because you can imagine, let's, let's say there's 20 signals all along here. This yellow is only going to show what you are receiving right in this tiny little narrow portion right here. You're not going to see what's over here. You're not going to see what's over here. That is where this side window comes in. The side window will list a whole bunch of stations at different frequencies, and as they're calling CQ, CQ, CQ fields A, when it's set recognizing CQ, it'll actually even turn red. Then you can click on this, it moves the waterfall, uh, the guy, the selector on the waterfall right to it. You can start reading and decoding what they're actually sending right here. Now, if you want to go ahead and send something, you're going to use the text, the blue text box. You're going to actually type something down in here. Um, and then just really fast, I want to go over here. Uh, RX and TXID, uh, just leave those off for fail day. It'll actually do like a, a little blip before and after or when you're receiving. That will tell you, hey, I'm working PSK31. It sounds like it's a really good idea during fail day, but it's not. Um, Especially when you have, have one guy that does this and you're, you've got it set to receive those and suddenly you've got 30 guys that have all had their FL Digi automatically jump over to it and now you've got all these guys, you know, you've just hijacked their signal. So I just turn those off. Tune, again, just sends the tone, lets you see that you're actually getting out. Uh, down here at the bottom, waterfall. The very bottom left hand uh, corner toggles waterfall. You've got sensitivity right here for your audio, and then you've got uh, the rate of the waterfall, that's the 1x that you can see. Uh, you've got, uh, well, well, some of these I'm just gonna go ahead and skip because well, I don't really use them very much. Uh, this right here is the location that you are on the waterfall. So I'm actually not right dead on 15 hertz, right? But you can, you can increase or decrease those. Uh, you can lock the transmit frequency, and then this is, the very bottom right hand corner is a fantastic like abort everything button. So again right here I can go ahead and fine tune or let's say I'm off by a lot it's going to jump by 10 hertz right. So it allows me to move that and you can see it moving on the waterfall. Let's see. So let's go ahead and hurry and get started because I've got only 15 minutes left. I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough content and now I'm worried that I have too much content. Okay, so as you can see, we're, I'm going to go ahead and just send this message. I'm specifically going to transmit this via the speakers on this. In reality, what I'd normally be having is it's going through the signaling for the audio interface to the radio, right? It actually doesn't play out your speakers. It's actually sending this noise like a dial-up modem would, right? Except for over the air and then they're receiving that noise and they're decoding it. So that's basically what we're doing. But I'm actually going to be sending it out of the speakers and decoding it with this guy. Unfortunately, I, I think the speakers and this guy's broken, so I'm actually sending it back via a cable. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, I want to do CQ, field day, CQ, field day. Uh, this is N1SC. Please, someone, come back. I need points. <laughs> and then you can say, uh, you know, N1SEK, right? So I'm going to go ahead and transmit this guy. And you can see it actually sending. Now I go, oh, shoot, that was really rude of me to say that. So I'm going to go and I'm going to delete this. It is actually transmitting. It is actually transmitting the backspace, and they can actually see it go backwards. And then you can say, I love you, right? And then go ahead down here. So what you're going to see is those two lines where th there's no data. It finishes sending it, and now the data's gone, and now it's just kind of hanging out here. You're going to see guys do this all the time. They forget to actually stop transmitting. 
So what you're going to do is you're, you, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press the receive button to tell it to go back into receive mode. Again, if say you type something and you hit the wrong macro and it's just filled that whole blue box full of all sorts of stuff and you're going, oh, that's not the one I wanted to send. If you click this very bottom right hand corner one, it's a great way to just like halt, stop, emergency, <laughs> holy crap, right? So as you can see, typing that out, that was a nightmare, right? Can you guys imagine how like incredibly inefficient that was trying to type that out? Well, all of these fields, all of this time, what I have been doing is actually saving variables. So we're going to go back to math, right? And you've got x plus y, x might be 20, and y might be 30, x plus y, you've got 50, right? Save that into z. Now you've got variables with values, right? We are doing the exact same thing, and we're going to use those values to generate um, different things. Uh, different kind of script, kind of pre-recorded messages or macros. So that's what these guys are. So when I click this button down here to transmit, if I right-click on him, that's the that's the macro. Uh, that's the that's the command right there to say I want you to start transmitting. And this is the label for the button. And I'm, I want to just show you this. Look at all of these available variables. So my call sign, my antenna, my description, my location, and basically anything and everything that I was filling out is more or less available as a variable that I can put into these macros. So let's go ahead and call CQ. This is going to be a lot easier, right? Wasn't that a whole heck of a lot easier than me trying to type that out? So this, again, is calling a macro which is using those variables, has pulled out my call sign automatically, and it said, please come back, and it finished transmitting. So it, I don't have to worry about clicking that button to hang up, and I'm not uh, blasting and spamming everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this guy and take a look at it, and there it is. CQ, CQ, day, my call, all of the variables are stored in the open and closing brackets. And then I do the returns. It even sends the it even sends uh, new lines as well or carriage returns. So if you don't if you don't put like these on the new line pretty soon, like everything just starts stacking up on one line, and it's really 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 hard to read. So I really highly recommend breaking stuff out, and you'll see that in some of my other macros. So what we're doing is we're starting to use these these variables. Macros will save your life with this. So you had asked an excellent question. You said, okay, well, we've got two modes. We've got the hunt and peck, and we have the running the frequency. Well, I'm calling CQ. That's me running the frequency, right? How do we exchange the data? Well, if I call CQ, they're going to come back to me. They're going to say, NONSC, this is blah, 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 right? And now I want to go blah, 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 blah. This is NONSC, please copy. And they're going to say, yeah, please copy. So it's kind of like you're doing the exact same exchange, but kind of in reverse. And uh, my macros, these are just the, the way I prefer. When I set up and then Chad, WE7CB, he comes up and he'll sit down and I'm like, oh, thank heaven someone else is here to work PSK31, right? And uh, he comes and sits down, he'll change all my macros. I'm like, Chad! Right? And then I can sit back down and I go and do the same thing I, to all his macros. I destroy his. So uh, it's kind of a fun game. It keeps you, it keeps you awake, right? So again, They've got different answers, right? They're going to transmit this again. This is all on one line. Transmit their call and my call. So, okay, well, there wasn't a fill. Where in the world do I get their call from? So I'm going to go ahead and send this guy. And this guy's going to be quiet because I'm pushing him over a cord. And plus, I don't want to be deaf. I was doing this last night, and I was like, I'm fairly certain my guinea pigs are were about ready to explode in the kitchen. Okay, uh, so I could say N1. SC, day K, seven UVA, PSE, copy, um, three alpha Utah, uh, QSL, right? And then I go ahead and... Ah! I was doing that. It's, it's like an unveiling of the surprise, right? It's like, move that bus. There you go. So, I'm just kidding. I didn't actually do that. I wasn't even selected on the frequency. So let me go ahead and copy paste. 
I didn't even I didn't even select it. Okay, copy, paste, send it again. Oh, I didn't even. Okay. Okay. So again, right there, cut off the beginning of the of the call sign, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to say K7UVA, K7UVA, three alpha, three alpha UT uh, QSL, right? Um, K. And I've stopped transmitting. So what I can do, <clears throat> FL Digi has this kind of uh, really neat feature that kind of sometimes bites you, uh, where you can click again, and that interactive, this huge field is actually rather quite interactive. You can right click on it, and you get a context menu. You can clear different things like that. I can go ahead and click on K7 UVA. <laughs> Boom, it's already put this in here. It's calculated what time I started. And when I finish, until the time I click the logbook, it actually do the start and end times for me. I can say, oh, they are 3A and they're in Utah. I have now just filled out that information. So now I can go ahead and come back and say... Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Take a step back. How did you fill those in again? Yeah, so let me hear you share real fast. Right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear these guys really fast. This little broom. We'll, we'll clear those fields for you, so then that way it kind of gets you back. This little uh, world icon, you can actually tell it in the logging to hook up to QRZ. It will actually pull the data down for you, so if you click on their call sign, it does a look up on QRZ, pulls that data down, and pre-populates like everything, including like their, their ancestors and all sorts of stuff, right? <laughs> and um, so again, you've got this call sign, right, the call box. You have the class and the section. In this context menu, I saw them pull, or, or excuse me, I saw them send this to me. So I have their call sign, I have their, I have their section, I have their, their class, their class is 3A, right, which means something, right, they've got three transmitters, and they're a club, and they're in Utah. So I'm going to go ahead and take my mouse, and I'm literally hovering just right over K7 UVA, and I'm going to just click, it's just a simple left click. And it has already, it'll copy that and put it right in there. So if I were to come to like something like this right here, where it's like a uh, personal alerter, right? I mean, it's going <laughs> to, it copies into the fill. It's like, no, that's not what I wanted, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select 3A and then UT. Now, this is where the cool part comes in. This is where the magic starts to tie in. This is why we went through the huge headache of actually like linking everything and going, oh my gosh, I need like a network administrator to sit here with me, right? I'm going to go ahead and press log. I've just finished, and they've finished talking to me, and I've finished talking to them. I just press this tiny little arrow where it says save, right? This little thing saving into, I don't know what that is. It looks like a smashed ruler or something. I don't know what the icon is. But it has pushed it automatically into the M3FJP log. So now all of my other stations that are running phone, that are running CW, they have this and they'll see it whoop, pop up in theirs and they have this now. So now say my CW station to get really bored of CW or like their thumb falls off, right? So, and they switch to digital, they now know, oh, K7 UVA, which is a 3A, was already worked on the 20 meter digital mode, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, N3FJP does some other features like uh, uh, band negotiations, so make sure you're not like people aren't doing uh, on the same band in the same mode at the same time. Just kind of some cool stuff like that too. So it's not just it's not just that. So let's try and go back to the macros. And I've got six minutes to follow this up. Uh, so let's try and go back to the macros. These macros are the default macros. These are fantastic for ragtime. Please for the love of nachos, do not use these macros. Like uh, when I start a conversation, there's nothing, or uh, when I start an exchange, there's nothing more irritating when they click this brag button and I'm working a contest and they go, my name is Bob, I have 173 grandchildren. Their names are in reverse alphabetical order. I'm running a rig blaster at 17 watts with a dipole that's 12 feet off the ground. I was licensed in in 1843, right? So eight years ago, oh my gosh, please just, I just want to get the exchange, move on. It's like, okay, you're 1H in uh, Alaska. You know, I'm just kidding. 
But anyways, you, you can't actually. Actually, I'll set up map for us to say, explain fill day, explain the exchange, and explain the section. And I'll click those and queue them all up, let it run through. They come back with the information. I go, okay, that was a really long contact, but I got a contact. That's two more points, right? So I'm going to go ahead. First, you saw the, the, the painstaking way of filling out the blue stuff. You saw the, okay, this is a little bit more gooder, less batter, right? Less batter, you get smaller pancakes or fewer, depending on how you look at it. Uh, so you've got this one, right? You've got the KN, back to you, my name, their call, your call, different things like that. Over here, the very right hand corner, this took me like years to discover this thing because it's so small, so hidden. There's a, in fact, it's cutting off on the monitor. See, that's how hidden it is. They don't want you guys to even see this. Uh, there is a tiny button right here that says one. It is like twice as wide as what my cursor is on the screen. If I click this guy, it'll give me more rows. So I can go to row two. And it will do things like, say you're working a contest that requires an incrementing exchange, right? Your station 1A from DN40. 2A from DN40, 3A from DN40. It actually has a built-in counter. And I can use, and I can actually use these different things to actually do this for me, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, well that's not really necessary for this one. Here's a third one. Okay, sweet, I've got a huge record. It'll give, it'll give you four. So you have four places to set up these macros. And I'm gonna hurry and just do this really fast. Uh, I, I promised you guys I was gonna show you the difference between uppercase and lowercase. So here's uppercase, which takes 25 seconds is about the average of what I've calculated this out. So I'll kind of give you an idea as to the speed. It's going, it's going. He's telling you about his grandkids, right? It's still going. He's now gone through and he's giving you all of his medical records. <laughs> Go on. Okay, so it's just done. And up there at the very top, I don't know if you noticed this, I probably should have pointed this out. We'll show you the transmit time up here. That's how long you have been transmitting for. There's times I'll get in the right tube. I was talking to the, the lead test pilot for Boeing one time on PSK 31. I looked up, it's like, oh, I'm at like 15 minutes transmit time, right? And I'm hurrying. It's like, uh, back to you, right? I'm hurrying. Uh, but, um, so now let's go ahead and go back to the lower. Again, you can see right there, again, that red thing pops up. See how much faster that is? And maybe, I'm, and maybe it's just me, I don't know. But again, you've got that. This takes about 19 seconds versus the other one was an average of 25 seconds. So you've just shaved, I don't know, what is that like? Very, really good math, what is that? Somewhere around a third, approximately 30%, roughly, time that you have just saved. So, I have gone ahead and here are some pre-macros that I have created that are in the notes for you guys to see. We're going to go back to your question again. The green I have saved as I am running a frequency. The red is for I am hunting and pecking. And the purple is the holy crap, help me out, something weird is going on, right? So I'm going to go ahead and call CQ, but before I do this, I just wanted to show you I've included the timer. So if I'm sitting here running a frequency every five seconds, it's going to call CQ. And then it's going to wait five seconds, and then it's going to call it again. So I'm going to be able to, uh, you're going to see a timer in the very top right corner, way up here. As soon as it's done, he's going to start to count down, and he's going to go back to CQ again. So this is like really, really useful when it's like three in the morning, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say, ah, I want to board in the middle of this. I'm going to click the magic button down here. Oh, I almost forgot to go over this. This is a really, 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 really important feature. Um, and I'm like almost out of time. Uh, one minute, okay. So right down here at the very bottom corner, if, if that green line, if, if your receive is lower than that, it's, all of that data is being squelched out. So you're gonna have to move that, or you're gonna have to adjust the input volume, so then that way you can actually start receiving data. Because if it's below that, you're not gonna be receiving that information. Um, so again, you can have the answer, right? But because I have, uh, I don't have any information in here, notice what it did to my macro. It messed it all up. It said, please copy N1SC. When I have their call, uh, my class, my section, and QSL back to you. Um, 
they come back, they give me their information, and I say, and I've clicked on the, the menu or their call sign and all that stuff now, and their fill, their class and their section, it's pre-populated this, pre-populated this and has filled this in now. So now I can say, I copied this information. Is this correct, QSL? And they come back and they say, yep, that's fantastic. You say, okay, well, TNX, TNX, 73, 73. Notice I'm doing everything in pairs, right? So then that way I know it's kind of like, it's my method of ECC, right? It's my method of making sure that they are getting the information because there could be some QSB or whatever. Uh, and then again, I'm hunting and pecking. I see the guy's call I want. I click his call sign ahead of time and I just do a quick call. Hey, you, this is everyone I see. Uh, please come back to me. Notice the KN, right? Uh, and then he comes back, he says, oh, and when I see, I'm blah, 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 and I'm located in who knows where. And this is my, uh, this is my, uh, my class, right? And I can go back and say, okay, well, please copy my call and my class and my section, right? And do you, uh, K, uh, do you QSL back to you from me? Uh, again, KN. And he gives me his information or whatever, and you can say, yeah, well, I copied this. Is this correct, right? And, and again, these, you're going to adapt these as you go. This is kind of a good general starting point. And then you can say, thank you. Notice that I'm not calling QRZ at the end of his frequency, right? I've done that a gazillion times, and I'm like, oh, sorry, I accidentally hit the QRZ button instead of the 73 button. Because he was running the frequency, and I was approaching him. So those were kind of like the differences between running on go. And then just really fast, this is a big one. Again, again, uh, please, uh, please repeat. Um, no copy, I'm sorry, but you're just out there, 73. Uh, sometimes it's good to just have a general transmit where it just starts transmitting and you can free type. And then the last one is uh, telling it to, to go ahead and receive, which is actually that carrot. So, But that's more or less it. I appreciate you guys putting up with me for an hour. So hopefully that was worthwhile and that will get you guys started. So.